All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about Ultimate Texas Hold'em, probably my favorite table game. Uh, I like it because it has a very good payback percentage compared to similar games, uh, as well as the potential for some very high payouts on hands like a, like a Royal Flush. And I have a lot of fun playing it, probably because I'm also a Texas Hold'em player myself. So today we'll be talking about... Um, I'll be explaining the game itself as well as some strategies that I use to maximize my expected return and some mistakes that I do see many players making um, that could potentially lower your uh, expected return uh, as well. So let's get started. Uh, before I get started, uh, I just want to make a mini disclaimer that uh, regardless of how well you play this game, it still has a significant enough house edge to uh, guarantee that you will lose money in the long run so it should only be played for entertainment. Uh, if you do happen to get lucky in the short term, that's great, but uh, you should not expect to make money from this game. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about how the game works. In Ultimate Texas Hold'em, there are two forced bets which you have to make. Uh, they are the blind and the ante, and they have to be equal to each other. Um, the ante wins if you beat the dealer and the dealer qualifies. And this means that they have a pair or better. This pair could be in their hand or it could be on the community cards as well. Um, the blind will pay you if you have a straight or better. Um, so once you've made those two bets, you are then dealt your first two cards, which are known as the whole cards. Uh, at this point, there is a big decision to make. You have the option to raise three times your bet, four times your bet, or to check, which means that you don't bet anything and you get to see the next cards that are dealt. Uh, this decision is very important in determining your payback percentage in the game. With perfect strategy, this game does have a low house edge compared to other poker-based table games. If you're interested in the full odds breakdown of the game, as well as a more in-depth look at the strategies that, uh, that I am going to be talking about today, I have linked the resource that I personally use in the description of this video. All right, so let's talk about the optimal strategy for when to raise uh, after the first two cards are dealt. Um, one thing to note is that you should never raise three times on any hand if you want to play perfect strategy. So a raise means four times the ante. Uh, the payback percentage with perfect strategy is approximately 97.8%, so a pretty decent payout for um, what's known as a, a carnival game or a um, game based on uh, a variation of poker. Uh, so the correct strategy for raising preflop is the following. If you have any ace, you're supposed to raise four times. Uh, that includes ace-deuce, so anywhere from ace-deuce offsuit to ace-king suited. Any pair of threes or higher is a raise. Uh, pocket deuces is a check. If you have any suited king you're supposed to raise, or any unsuited king five or higher. Um, I find that many players uh, that I've played this game with will not raise on low to mid-range kings, but this is a mistake according to the uh, optimal strategy. Um, the same applies for queen six suited or higher, you're supposed to raise, queen eight off suit or higher, uh, jack eight suited or higher, and jack 10 off suit. So those are the raises. Anything else, any other hands uh, that are dealt, you check. Uh, this strategy is pretty similar to, but not identical to heads up uh, Texas Hold'em that you play against another player, um, which is why the selection of hands that you're supposed to raise with preflop um, would seem a lot different than what you would raise with at a full poker table with nine or six players. Um, this, is because this, this is because despite the fact that there may be other players at the table, uh, you are only playing against the dealer. So you don't have to beat everybody at the table you just have to beat the dealer. So it's essentially heads up uh, you against the dealer. 
So once this decision is made, the uh, next three cards are dealt, which is called the flop. Now these cards are community cards, which means that they could be used by both the player and the dealer. And uh, basic strategy at this point says that if you have a pair or better, you should, you should raise two times your ante on the play bet, which is the maximum allowed during this round of betting. So after being dealt the first two cards, you could raise four times, but once you see the flop, you're only allowed to raise two times. And this makes sense because you have a lot more information at this point. So after this decision is made, uh, the final two cards are then dealt and the player can either choose to bet one times their ante or fold the hand. Uh, you must make a play bet, which is equal to the ante at this point in order to have a chance to win. Um, now the strategy involved in making the decision whether you want to play the hand or fold the hand is a strategy called counting the outs. Um, many players may have not heard of this, uh, but it is a relatively simple strategy um, that could be easily figured out. It's by no means absolutely perfect, but it can reduce the house edge in the long term. Now, what counting the outs means is you're counting the number of cards that the dealer could possibly have that beat you. Uh, according to the strategy, if the dealer has less than 21 possible cards that could beat you or outs, um, you're supposed to play. And if they have 21 or more, you're supposed to fold. So for example, if you had a king high, such as a king three offsuit, uh, which you would not raise on preflop, and the board was 10 of clubs, jack of clubs, two of spades, 10 of hearts, and four of diamonds, there are two tens, three twos, three jacks, and three fours that could beat you by giving the dealer a pair, as well as four aces that could give the dealer a higher kicker. So the total outs be 15 outs. Uh, this is less than 21, so you should play that hand. Uh, in situations where there is one possible card to a straight or a flush on the board, then these are also counted as possible outs. So for example, if there is a six, seven, eight, nine on the board and you as the player don't have the five or the 10, then four fives and four tens are now added to the possible outs. Uh, or in the case of four to a flush, since there are 13 cards of each suit, the nine that are left in the deck are now added to the possible outs. All right, so in the case of the king three offsuit, let's assume the board is six, seven, eight, nine um, with a deuce of diamonds. And now there are potentially 15 outs that could give the dealer a pair, uh, four that give the dealer a higher kicker, which are, which are all the four aces in the deck. And now there are eight possible cards that make the dealer a straight. So you now have a total of 27 outs, which um, means that you fold the hand. In the case of four to a flush, um, let's assume that it's the um, 10 of clubs, jack of clubs, two of spades, uh, 10 of hearts, four of diamonds, but instead now there are um, four hearts on the board. Now there is an additional nine cards that are left, that nine additional cards that could make the dealer a winning hand. Uh, so now you would also fold that hand. All right, so a lot of people might ask, um, well, what about um, winning combinations that uh, could be made with both of the dealer's cards? So for example, if the dealer had a pocket pair, would you add um, possible pocket pairs, or if there was three to a straight or three to a flush, possible two card combinations that the dealer could have? And the answer is no. The outs are only calculated um, using one card combinations. Uh, if you added two card combinations, it would be quite complicated and provide a uh, little extra, little additional value um, to the strategy. Uh, keep in mind that you want to be able to do this calculation in a reasonable time while you're playing without without slowing down the entire table. All right, so that um, that pretty much covers the um, the ante and play bets, which are the main bet in this game. Um, there is a trips bet, which is an optional side bet, 
Um, now, this is a bonus bet that pays out on hands of three of a kind or higher. Um, it has a higher house edge of the main bet, but it can be a lot of fun to play. And compared to other side bets in the casino, the payback percentage is not that terrible, in my opinion. Um, and the other thing is that even if you lose the hand, uh, if you get trips or higher, you will still be paid out on this side bet. So that's kind of nice. Um, for example, if there's a royal flush on the on the board, on the on the flop and the uh, the last two cards, um, you would be paid on on the trips at least. So um, usually the pay table for trips is the following. Um, so you can see here it's uh, three to one for trips, four to one for a straight, seven to one for a flush, eight to one uh, for a full house, thirty to one for quads, forty to one for a straight flush, and 50 to one for a royal flush. However, I have noticed a better pay table in some casinos, um, but it is hard to find. Uh, this pay table pays the following. It pays three to one for three of a kind, five to one for a straight, six to one for a flush, eight to one for a full house, 30 to one for quads, 40 to one for a straight flush, 50 to one for a royal flush. Um, so with this pay table, the house edge is approximately 2% versus approximately 3.5% on the more common pay table. As far as side bets go, like I said, it's not bad at all. Uh, in some casinos, they also offer a progressive jackpot. Uh, typically, this only pays out if you hit three of a kind or better um, on the flop. So in your first five cards, I've actually seen it as high as seven figures for a royal flush on the flop but it usually is over six figures. Uh, naturally, you could expect a house edge to be quite high on this bet, but it can be entertaining. And I will personally always play the progressive bet because I would absolutely kick myself if I hit it without betting. Uh, for my bankroll and bet size, these bets are usually a small percentage of my money, so it doesn't really affect my, uh, my overall expected value that much. I don't mind throwing a few dollars on each hand. Uh, but you have to decide what makes the most sense uh, for you. Typically, this bet is $5 or a $1, dollar, uh, but the $5 progressive is usually a lot higher of a, of a payout than the $1. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, for those of you who are new to Ultimate Hold'em, I hope that uh, helped you understand the game a little bit better, as well as some strategies that uh, can be used to maximize your expected return on the game. Um, before I end the video, uh, let's see some of the best hands that I've hit on this game to date. Enjoy.